In this video, I will walk you through free response question number five from the 2007 Form B AP Calculus exam. This problem is primarily about slope fields and differential equations. Consider the differential equation dy dx equals 1 half x plus y minus 1. Part A. On the axes provided, sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the nine points indicated. The equation for dy dx will give us the slope at any point. So at the point negative 1 comma 2, we have 1 half times negative 1 plus 2 minus 1. This gives negative 1 half plus 1, which equals 1 half. So the slope of this point should be 1 half. So draw yourself a slope that's increasing, but try to make it less than a 45 degree angle. At the point 0 comma 2, we have 1 half times 0 plus 2 minus 1. This equals 0 plus 1, which equals 1. So let's draw a slope of 1, 45 degree angle. At the point 1 comma 2, we have 1 half times 1 plus 2 minus 1. This equals 1 half plus 1, which equals 1.5. So increasing slope, try to make it a little bit steeper than a 45 degree angle. At the point negative 1 comma 1, we have 1 half times negative 1 plus 1 minus 1. This is negative 1 half plus 0, which equals negative 1 half. So decreasing slope but not as steep as a 45 degree angle. At the point 0 comma 1, we have 1 half times 0 plus 1 minus 1. And that's 0, so draw your slope as a horizontal line. At the point 1 comma 1, we have 1 half times 1 plus 1 minus 1. This equals 1 half, so increasing but less than 45 degrees. At negative 1 comma 0, we have 1 half times negative 1 plus 0 minus 1. This equals negative 1.5, so decreasing and steeper than a 45 degree angle. At 0 comma 0, we have 1 half times 0 plus 0 minus 1. This equals negative 1, so decreasing at a 45 degree angle. At 1 comma 0, we have 1 half times 1 plus 0 minus 1. This is negative 1 half, so decreasing, but not as steep as a 45 degree angle. Part B, find the second derivative in terms of x and y. Describe the region in the xy plane in which all solution curves to the differential equation are concave up. First of all, the second derivative will be the derivative of the first derivative. And uh, differentiating term by term with respect to x, the derivative of 1 half x will just be 1 half. And the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Of course, the derivative of a constant is 0. So, so far we have this. We need to find the second derivative in terms of x and y. Right now we have this derivative in here. That's no good. We need to replace this with something. But guess what? dy dx is equal to 1 half x plus y minus 1. So we can replace dy dx with this expression. This is actually an answer to the first part of the question, but we might as well combine the 1 half with the negative 1 to make negative 1 half. This is the second derivative in terms of x and y. For the second half of the question, Remember that the original function will be concave up where the second derivative is positive. So we start off with this. The second derivative is greater than zero. To make it easier to describe the region where this is true, let's get y by itself. So adding one half to both sides, we have one half x plus y is greater than one half. Subtracting 1 half x from both sides, we have y is greater than negative 1 half x plus 1 half. Here's a graph of the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 1 half. The region in the xy plane where y is greater than negative 1 half x plus 1 half 
is this yellow region above the line. We say solution curves will be concave up on the half plane above the line y equals negative one half x plus one half. Part C, let y equals f of x be a particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f at zero equals one. Does f have a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals zero? Justify your answer. First semester, we learned two different ways to determine if we have a relative min or a relative max at a particular point. One was the first derivative test, and the other was the second derivative test. However, for the first derivative test, part of it is we need to make a sign chart of the first derivative. And uh, when the first derivative is written in terms of x and y, it is not conducive to making a sign chart. So forget about the first derivative. How about the second derivative test? Well, for that, we had to do two things. Step one is to determine that the first derivative is equal to zero at the point of interest. So they gave us one point by giving us the initial condition uh, f at zero is equal to one. That is giving us the point zero comma one. So let's determine whether the second derivative at the point zero comma one is equal to zero. That's the first half of the second derivative test. So we have one half times zero plus one minus one. At a glance, we can see that this is in fact equal to zero. So that's the first half of the second derivative test. The other thing we have to do is evaluate the second derivative and see if it's positive or negative. In part B, we learned that the second derivative was equal to this expression. So let's evaluate this at the point zero comma one and see if it's positive or negative. Evaluating the second derivative at the point zero comma one gives us one half, which is positive. Remember, the idea behind the second derivative test is that since the first derivative is equal to zero, that means we definitely have a horizontal tangent line. And in this case, since the second derivative is positive, that means the function is concave up, which indicates that the horizontal tangent line will occur at a relative min. We say f has a relative minimum at zero comma one because the first derivative equals zero and the second derivative is positive at zero comma one. Notice that for the second derivative test, you must include both of these things. Not only will you say that the second derivative is either positive or negative, but you must mention that the first derivative is equal to zero. Part D, find the values of the constants m and b for which y equals mx plus b is a solution to the differential equation. Here is the differential equation from the setup. We are looking for a solution in the form y equals mx plus b. If we take the derivative of both sides of this equation, we get dy dx is equal to m. So we have three equations to play around with to allow us to find the constants m and b. Let's begin with dy dx equals m. Since dy dx is also equal to one half x plus y minus one, we can substitute this expression in right here. So now we have this. I would like to rewrite the left side of the equation in terms of a single variable. So let's substitute mx plus b in for y. So now we have this. My strategy is to rewrite both sides of this equation in the form something times x plus something on both sides of the equation. But for that to happen, I need just a single x. Right now, I have two of them. So let's solve that issue by factoring out an x. So now we have this. Let's think about how close we are to the setup that we are shooting for. 
I have something times x plus something on the left-hand side of the equation. So that part is good. I need to turn this single m into something times x plus something. How can I do that? I can complete the form by putting in a 0x term right here. This does not change the value of the expression. I can use this model to set up a simple system of equations. The coefficient of x must equal the coefficient of x. And the other coefficient must equal the other coefficient. So 1 half plus m must equal 0, and b minus 1 must equal m. Subtracting 1 half from both sides, we have m is equal to negative 1 half. Substituting negative 1 half in for m, we get b minus 1 equals negative 1 half. Adding 1 to both sides gives us b equals positive 1 half. So that's it. If y equals mx plus b is a solution to the differential equation, then m equals negative one half and b equals positive one half.